If you're using Microsoft Planner to report on one of your projects or even manage your tasks across lots of projects, it can often feel that when it comes to reporting in Planner, that you can feel overwhelmed or even confused at all the options available to you. How can you effectively report to your team members, your boss, or even yourself on all of the work that you've got on at the moment? Well, I'm gonna show you how. Yes, because I've felt that way in Planner before. I'm gonna be showing you the five ways I've improved my own work using Microsoft Planner, using the reporting capabilities. So whether you need to see your tasks across a schedule view, or you need to be able to sort and filter them through inbuilt reports in Planner, or even export them into Excel to build new visualizations that you simply couldn't get in Planner, I'm going to be showing you a range of different options that you can use today to improve the way that you report using Microsoft Planner. Before we dive in, I'd love it to hit that like button, and not only that, hit that subscribe button, where you can come on a journey with me to turn you into a productivity superstar and use the tools that you already have in a better way. Otherwise, let's dive into Planner and check out those reporting capabilities. So let's start off with Planner's capability for charts, because yes, we don't want to spend all day building charts, right? And Planner can give us a view for charting and also filtering as well. Now here I am inside the Planner on the web at task.office.com. Left-hand side, you'll also see a list of all of your plans, as well as in the center of the page inside of your hub. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is open our Mark 8 project. Here are all the tasks assigned to all the team members. I want to have a view of where work is assigned and have a chart of that as well. Well, all we need to do is click on charts at the top in Planner and we now see an overall view of all of our charts. We see a status, how many are in each bucket, the priority, and who has all the most tasks. That's very useful to see. But I'm also going to have a meeting later with Adele. I want to ensure that I understand what tasks Adele is working on so I can update her and see where things are at. Well, all we need to, need to do is go to filters in the top right, and then in here, we can filter through the chart. Scroll down and we'll select Adele's name. And once we do that, we now see that Adele has five tasks. We also see two haven't started, three are in progress, but there are no late or completed tasks. And most have to do with messaging and brand under that bucket. We can also scroll down and see where those tasks are also shared. Adele shares these with Alex, Grady and Irving. And on the right hand side, we can actually click into any of these tasks under the relevant bucket. For example, our marketing campaign for launch events. Here is one of those tasks Adele is working on. And I could add comments or also understand where that task is at ahead of my meeting with Adele. But how does it also work having a view of upcoming tasks? Because that's really important for our catch up. I may not want to chase a delve of a piece of work or a task that's coming up in two months time. Instead, watch due this week. Well, let's close down this card interface here and go back into the filter on the right hand side. And here we can set this for any work this week. And we now see that there's only one task less remaining, which is currently in progress for this week. And I can also see on the left hand side that it relates to the same task. I can again click into this for our launch event campaign and understand where things are at. But this does mean that the filter, well actually you can filter on more information, not just one single property. Maybe it's a bucket and a label, an assignment or where work is at. You can dynamically change your charts inside a planner to get a view of all upcoming tasks that are happening within your team or even the completed work as well. But while we saw the charting available for the team, you have lots of tasks on. You're going to go through every single plan and look at every single task that's assigned to you? No, and certainly you don't have enough time in a day. So instead, once again using Planner on the web, instead of clicking into the individual plan that you're working on, there's an option on the left to click on Assign to Me. When you do that, you'll see a board view of all of your work. You can click into any of these and update them as you would expect inside a planner. But the difference is, this view is all about you. Yes, not your team. You'll also see an option for charts at the top and this gives you a view of all of your work that's currently on. I can see that I've got four tasks not started, but I do have 11 tasks that are currently late. 
I can also, at the bottom, see which tasks relate to which plan, which is a good way to understanding where most of my work is coming from. But I'm interested in finding out where all of my late work is. I need to get working on it right away. Can I easily report on that? And once again, the answer is yes. In the filters in the top right, I'm going to mark it for any late tasks. And I now see there is 11 tasks here that I need to work on. And they're all shown on the right hand side. Now it doesn't matter if they belong to one or many plans. We can see that these tasks here relate to my event planning. But I also have tasks coming from my store designs at the bottom. These are tasks allocated across all of my plans, giving me my ability to report across all of my own tasks. And I can also change the grouping. Currently it's grouped by progress, which is largely not started because I haven't actually worked on these tasks. But what if I had a priority? Well, I can also click in a drop down and mark it by priority. I could then see any items that are marked as urgent or more important than our medium tasks, giving me a better view of all of my work on, able to prioritize my view of tasks and get working on those important elements as well. So the ability to have charts inside a planner is not limited to your team or even a single plan. You can get a view of all of your work in planner really easily and use the capabilities I've shown you today. I'd love it if we just take a moment to let you know about something that we've got upcoming that can certainly help you on your journey. Because yes, we know that people want to master Microsoft 365 when it comes to task management. Should you use Planner, To Do, Microsoft Lists or Microsoft Loop? And so what we've now created is an on-demand masterclass sharing the best ways you can manage tasks using those tools in the best possible way. Now, if you want to find out more and enroll on our masterclass, you can find the link below and head in and enroll. Otherwise, while you're on our website, why not check out our free Microsoft 365 ebook to help you get the most from 365. Otherwise, let's dive back into Planner and keep checking out those awesome reporting capabilities. But you may be wondering, is there a way in Planner to get a view of all of your work across dates? Because the board view is great, as are charts, but you want a visual view of the tasks about when things need to be worked on and when things are done. And you absolutely can do that in Planner. This applies to whether you're working on a single plan or all of your own tasks under the Assign to Me bucket. But let's go ahead and open up our project for Mark 8 once again. And on here, we're going to go ahead and select Schedule. This gives us a view of all of the tasks across the schedule. And here we can click into any of them, such as media outlets, and we can see that this task was completed, although it was actually going to be worked across between the start and the due date across the date shown on my calendar. That's a good way of seeing what's upcoming and what is currently in progress. But this can get quite busy. If you've already completed work like this, you might just want to focus on work that's upcoming, or maybe even not even started or in progress. So can we hide completed tasks? And we absolutely can. On the filter in the right hand side, in this part, we're gonna go and filter it, but I'm gonna filter it for only work that's currently in progress or not started. We can immediately see that the completed tasks are no longer shown on our schedule view. And you can apply multiple filters inside of this in the same way that we did on our charts, giving you a view of work on a calendar that you can plan in accordingly. So did you know you can also use Microsoft Copilot with Planner on the web? Yes, if you've got a business account, work or school account, you have access to Bing sidebar inside of Edge. And as long as you're signing with an account and also has a Microsoft 365 business license, you can use this service free of charge. Yes, you don't have to pay anything more. And it also has access to data inside of the browser. So let's go ahead and open up our Copilot sidebar. And I'm going to ask it a question to summarize the tasks on this page. And with that done, you can see the response here from Copilot. It's summarized that there are three tasks that are not yet completed in our to do bucket. There are also tasks for messaging and brand, and it outlines whichever have not been done. It summarizes our plan in just a few paragraphs. I could take this forward onto stakeholders or make sense of it. So it's very powerful to use Copilot integration inside of the browser that can also understand your plan in a little bit more detail. But it doesn't end there. Here is the assigned to me view inside a planner on the web. And I've asked Copilot to understand what tasks here need to be completed first. And as we can see on the right hand side, it's already identified what needs to be done. There's lots of tasks here, 
But based on the date, it's telling me which ones need to be prioritized and also provide a little bit more information. So the co-pilot capabilities can also understand what work you've got on and help you also focus on the most important tasks with a single question. And a question that we see a lot is how can we export data from Planner to either share it with people outside of the plan for reporting purposes or build custom reports like charts and other visualizations. And we can do that with a couple of clicks. Inside of your plan, you'll have an option under the free dot menu to export plan to Excel. When you do that, it will download to your computer, allowing you to open that inside of Excel and make changes. So with your data now in Excel, let's convert this into a table so we can use it for charts and more. Highlight the content here inside of your table, then go to format as table and apply the various formatting and mark that it has headers because it does have a row dedicated to headers. Click OK and you now have your data in a table. That means we can analyze this data or build further reports inside of Excel that you couldn't do inside of Planner. And now we've done that, well, let's go and analyze our data. Just left click into your data set here and then we'll select analyze data. On the right hand side, we can now analyze this information. Even better, as we scroll down, we can actually see that in progress is most of the tasks here. And I can easily insert a pivot chart directly inside of Excel. With this capability, you can ask questions of your data, build reports and more that Planner simply couldn't give you. And in addition, share it with third parties who may need more information, but shouldn't access the planner and all of the resources itself. This is a great way to be able to extend your capabilities to plan and report using planner and use the power of Excel. And there you have it. You now have multiple options to use in Microsoft Planner to improve the way that you report. Yes, those all important tasks in your projects certainly shouldn't slip through those cracks if you follow some of the strategies I've shown you today. Whether that's going to be the ability to export your tasks into Excel, look at it through the inbuilt charts and also filter them in a more appropriate way, or even look at them across a schedule view and the other options. You've got a range of different areas to check out in Planner today to improve the way that you manage projects and tasks. But of course, before we close out, I would love it again if you hit that like button if you haven't already to let me know that you like this content and also hit that subscribe button to come on a journey with us to become a productivity superstar and transform the way you work with tools, well, that you already have. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next one.